Now that we've had a couple of months to watch the Cloverfield Paradox, I've got a, well, not really a theory, but some thoughts I wanted to throw out there concerning the world that we see in this movie. This should go without saying, but lots and lots of spoilers for the Cloverfield Paradox here. No spoilers for the other Cloverfield movies, so you're good if you haven't seen those. So the premise of the Cloverfield Paradox, if you still haven't seen it, but you don't care about spoilers, is that an international group of people are on a space station trying to turn on this special machine that will make the fuel crisis go away. But the catch is that the machine can turn the laws of physics inside out, and it does. It causes all kinds of problems, like teleporting the entire station somewhere far away from Earth, teleporting someone from an alternate dimension onto the ship, slicing off a dude's arm and giving the severed arm some sentience, oh, and putting gigantic monsters on Earth. But it's mainly the alternate universe stuff that I want to talk about here. While they don't do the whole DC Universe thing of numbering alternate worlds, I'm going to assign some numbers here for clarity's sake. The world that the majority of the main characters come from, let's call that one Earth 1, and the world that Jensen, our antagonist, comes from, let's call that Earth 2. These two worlds are both very similar, but the ways that they are dissimilar are huge. For one, since Jensen was the engineer on the space station on Earth 2, they didn't have Tam, who is the engineer on Earth 1, and is also the lover of Schmidt on Earth 1. Speaking of Schmidt, he's a traitor on Earth 2, but is not on Earth 1. Also, the big plot MacGuffin machine that the crew from Earth 1 are trying to jumpstart, on Earth 2, they weren't able to get as far on it, and this plunged Earth 2 into a war because of the fuel crisis. Now, some of this is pretty explicitly there to kickstart the conflict in the final act of the movie. Jensen sees a way she can save her world in the machine that works on Earth 1, so she attempts to betray everyone so she can do just that. But there's some of it that isn't explained in as much depth, which leads to some of my thoughts on what could have been in this world. Now, with the nature of the Cloverfield multiverse, I doubt we'll ever get to see any of the characters that we saw in this movie again, or even other versions of these characters again. But it's fun to speculate, so let's do just that. Starting with Schmidt. Schmidt is a bit uptight, to say the least, and on Earth 2, if Jensen is to be believed, and that is a big if, he betrayed the crew for his country. Of course, the only thing we know for certain we can trust that comes from Jensen's mouth is that Hamilton's family family is still alive on Earth 2, since we see video evidence of that. Since Jensen is working against the crew from Earth 1, we really have no reason to believe that she is telling the truth when she says that Schmidt is untrustworthy, but let's just assume that she is for the purposes of this video. Now, the obvious reason Schmidt maybe betrayed the crew on Earth 2 and not on Earth 1 is because on Earth 2, the machine doesn't work and doesn't even come close to working like it does on Earth 1. So if the timeline proceeds at the same rate on both Earths, then that means the crew of the space station spent two years trying in vain to get a machine to work. So at some point, presumably, Schmidt got orders to take matters into his own hands for the good of his country. Now, I've never worked for my own government in any meaningful capacity, and I've especially never been a double agent, but I like to think maybe the world being in dire straits wasn't the only thing that pushed the Schmidt of Earth 2 into this situation. What else was different for Earth 2 Schmidt other than the machine not working? Well, he didn't have Tam as a girlfriend like the Schmidt of Earth 1 did. Now, just hear me out for a second. We're never explicitly told why the machine works on Earth 1 and not on Earth 2, but I have a theory. Schmidt, being a physicist, would have been one of the main brains behind the machine and its inner workings. In fact, in Earth 1, while the machine is able to power up, but before it fully works, we see him struggling to get it to do what they need it to do. So maybe Earth 2 Schmidt wasn't ordered to betray the rest of the crew, but volunteered because he felt like it was all he had left to contribute for his people since he couldn't get the machine to work. And here's another jump to conclusions. What if the reason Schmidt on Earth 1 did get the machine working is because Tam was there for him? We don't know when they got the machine working on Earth 1, and we don't know when Tam and Schmidt started dating, but I suspect the two seemingly unconnected items are actually connected. I'm no scientist, but I do fancy myself a creative type on the artistic side of things. And I've known writer's block before, and let me tell you, it can be very frustrating. Not only not knowing what to write, but having a pretty good idea of what you want to write, but not knowing how to write it. It's heck. But sometimes, what helps me with my writer's block is weird stuff that you wouldn't expect to help you. Might be a picture on the wall, might be going for a walk and clearing your mind of what you were working on so that you have a fresh look at it later. Or it might be a muse that you have in your life, a relative, a lover, a coworker, somebody who you can bounce ideas off of so that you can hear yourself think and realize what will and won't work. This muse doesn't even have to be someone who knows what you're talking about, but they can still be helpful to you in figuring your problem out. Now, what if that was the situation for Tam and Schmidt? What if the machine works on Earth-1 because Schmidt of Earth-1 had this muse there to help him figure it out somehow? Well, now there's a very interesting what if. But wait, there's more. What exactly is going to happen to the Schmidt of Earth-1 after the events of the movie? The obvious answer is that he and Hamilton get eaten by a monster pretty soon after they make it back to Earth. Sure, the machine is working now, so no more fuel crisis, but now we've got big, huge monster crisis which is arguably worse than a fuel crisis. But Schmidt is presumably one of the smartest brains on Earth, right? I mean, he was smart enough to be one of seven people out of the Earth's population of seven billion to be sent to the space station. I've never been on a space station, but when the fate of the world is at stake, I assume being the smartest guy in the room plays a big part in you being there. So if Schmidt and Hamilton don't get eaten by a monster, maybe they'll be pulled into the underground resistance. Now that the fuel crisis is over, the smartest people on the planet might be trying to find a way to get rid of these giant monsters. And Schmidt would certainly be handy in coming up with something, right? Except 
if everything we've seen in this video is true, then all things being equal, we've already seen a very despondent Schmidt on Earth 2 betray the rest of the world when the chips were down. Now that Schmidt of Earth 1 has lost the love of his life, what's to stop him from doing the same again? Sure, he can't throw his lot in with the monsters, that would be silly, but what if he becomes a mad scientist like Terry Sloan in DC Comics Earth 2 books from a few years ago, and he finds a way to get rid of the monsters, or at least keep them at bay, but at the cost of a substantial amount of human lives? Like I said, we know that Earth 2 Schmidt had little regard for human life, at least human life that wasn't from Germany, so what's to stop a bitter Schmidt from Earth 1 from committing genocide to save other people? Again, there's a lot of what ifs here. What if Tam's presence really was what got the machine working? What if he survives? What if he joins the resistance? What if he destroys a portion of humanity? And like I said, we're very likely not going to see these characters again, so this dissection is moot. But it's still fun to talk about. And since it's so fun to talk about, what do you guys think? Is my theory sound, or am I just an insane person? Let me know in the comments below. And let me know if you want me to do more videos like this one. And in the meanwhile, you guys have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.